Good Wednesday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. A pleasure to connect with you through the I Love Seville Network, where this show airs on every single social media platform known to mankind. <laughs> John Snow is in the house. You will recognize and meet him in a matter of moments. This guy has a big, beautiful brain, and we're going to be talking rates. John Snow of Ross Mortgage. Keith Smith, a, me a mere seconds away. The show is presented by Yes Realty Partners and Keller Williams Alliance. The show is powered by Ross Mortgage. If you need a name and a company you can count on to navigate this volatile and tumultuous time, it is Ross Mortgage. <coughs> count on people in the market, people that you can have face-to-face -face discussions with like we're doing right now. Judah Wickhauer, let's go to the studio camera and let's welcome the panel of experts. Keith Smith, John Snow, gentlemen, good morning. 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 Morning, gentlemen. I was just looking at my little run of show cheat sheet. This is 366. 366 for that? Real Talk. Number, show 366. And thank you, John, for being the star of show number 366. <laughs> we have done on this network in totality, I did a look, a little over 5,100 shows. Oh, my God. Think about that. That's awesome. A over over 5,100 shows. Over the length of how long? Over the length of the entire I Love Seville Network. Wow. Wow. That says something. Now, uh, uh, enough about, about us. Jon Snow, the yep. show is yours. Introduce yourself to everybody that's watching. <clears throat> Good morning, Charlottesville. Uh, my name is Jon Snow I'm with Ross Mortgage, and uh, happy to be here talking a little real estate with uh, Jerry and Keith. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, they said it last week. It was going to be painful, and it, it's starting to, uh, the pain is starting to show up. So let's start off a little bit about yourself. You're a local guy, right? You, you were born and raised and live here. Uh, some of us or come here as I came here in 86. Jerry, I can't remember the exact. 2000. 2000 yeah. on, on that end of it. So, uh, you know, before we get into rates and, and, you know, where the real estate's going and your crystal ball, which we actually have them, <clears throat> and we have little wands too, <laughs> uh, if you want them. Uh, so, you know, you've been here your whole life. So wh what has the number one thing that's changed that, st that stood out in your, <clears throat> in your mind that's really kind of, kind of went like an, an oh, aha moment, excuse me, that is different. Yeah. Um, I mean, Charlottesville, is, it's such a dynamic place, and it's, it's a great place to call home. I'm so fortunate that this is, you know, where I was born and, and chose to stay here. My family's from here. Um, so it's, it's just a very connected area with a sense of community and accountability that it's just hard to find in other places. So um, what I've seen over the years is just that, that continuation of, of just people, um, you know, showing the willingness and ability to, you know, to, to get together and, and, and be a family. I found it to be super open, particularly for a Yankee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it, all are welcome, and um, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, we know, yeah. So you know the old the difference between a Yankee and a damn Yankee, right? I do not. A damn Yankee stays. I know, right? <laughs> a, regular, a regular Yankee. Now They're tell the late Monticello <laughs> gate joke. Keith. I've no, 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 so many no, times. no. Remember, Why do they build the gates at Lake Monticello, Keith? Remember, th so three, show three sixty six. We spend too much time together. <laughs> so the joke is, is that they've built gates around Lake Monticello to keep the Yankees in. Keep, keep them in. Keep, keep them in. So look, um, you know, you, you kind of kicked it off, right? We, we, you know, six percent rates, right? Looks like it's going to go north. We've got some unpleasant coming down down the road which is meaning look hey I think this is going to creep to seven percent or or god forbid more it's going to be higher more than that right um first time home buyer right you know so you know if a first time home buyer comes and talks to you and you know they're concerned tell me what that conversation looks like right I'm a first time home buyer I'm looking at rates I want to buy right what what does that conversation look like well, it can go a very a couple of different ways, Keith. Um, one would be, you know, well, let's let's get you pre-qualified as you know ASAP and see sure. how strong you know of an offer we can put in for the you know house that you hopefully have found. Um, but if you're shopping, uh, it, it is difficult. So um, it is hard for people to get into the market at this point as a first-time buyer. Um, probably don't see that changing um, anytime soon. Um, but hopefully, um, as the rates do come up, it, it gets rid of some of this maybe investor money that's, that's popping up these houses and putting in some of these offers that keep the first-time homeowners offer as, you know, kind of weak on paper. And, and hopefully, um, some, there'll be a, you know, silver lining to some of this. 
So what, what do you think that silver line? I mean, John. So you know, the, the, we're we're up at we're up at six percent, seven percent. I was in a meeting last week um, in Rich, excuse me, in Washington D.C. Somebody even threw the eight number out there. Uh, and that has a huge impact, particularly on the first-time home buyer, right? Because their buying power reduces substantially as that interest rate interest rate goes up on that end of it. On the flip side, on the higher end, it doesn't potentially impact the higher end that much because they can bring a little bit more cash to the table to mm -hmm. kind of... Buy points down or pay for the property in full cash. That's exactly right. So thank you, Jerry. So are you, in your experience, are you seeing some folks wishing to buy points down? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we typically uh, will see a little bit of participation. Um, so yeah, just it's a case by case. It, it really is a case by case. So what is that? What is it? So for those who do not know what a buy down is, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like, right? Well, <clears throat> and so if I have the ability to buy a, buy a six down to a five and a half, how does that process work? We we'll just got to just bring more cash to close. Yeah. So so what I can do is in the beginning of the process, I can go ahead and say, okay, John, you know. Is it is it a point or half a point or whatever it is to go ahead and, and reduce that interest rate okay. or just bring the cash to the closing table so I'm borrowing less money? The results somewhat similar, right? It, it, it really is when you when you work out when you it work really out is. the math. So I'll tell you what, John. What's the expectation for the business here? How do we drive? I mean, everyone's on the real estate supply chain, mm -hmm. and whether we want to admit we're on the real estate supply chain, if you're a homeowner, you're on the real estate supply chain. Mm -hmm. If you're renting property in Central Virginia, you're on the real estate supply chain. That's right. We're all tied to this. Um, we know the impact this industry has. How do we manage expectations with clients? How do we keep craziness from happening out there? I think everyone realizes that the 6%, the 30-year fix is at now, the first time since 2008. This is not the ceiling. It's going to go higher. Mm -hmm. We have Jay Powell talking in T minus six days about another Fed hike. Mm -hmm. um, after the hot inflation number from yesterday, the, expect the expectation is a full basis point increase. The expectation in October is minimum of a half a point basis point increase. And now the chatter is November, they're going to do another one. Now we know that there is not a direct correlation with what the Fed is doing in mortgage rates, but mm -hmm. there is undoubtedly an indirect Absolutely. Cor correlation. 100%. Anywhere you want to go on this topic, just offer some insight to uh, mm. the many folks watching. Golly. Um, I, you, you know, just, just, just getting locked in as soon as possible. If you can find a property, you know, don't hesitate. If you're in the Charlottesville area, uh, this market is, is solid. I would just recommend um, moving forward sooner versus later. Uh, it, right now, you know, it, it does appear that it's, it's going to go higher. Um, so there is um, very little concern, in my opinion, about a crash. Uh, most buyers that are in homes now are very, very qualified buyers. So I do not see a, a tipping point or a, you know retreat of prices. I do see acceleration slowing, uh, but by no means uh, is the property going to be devalued in a year or two, like we saw in you know 2008. So, Breda, um, <clears throat> just to kind of pivot a little bit here, I read an article this morning in Moody's that the you know, one of my, Jerry and I have been talking about this for some time, you know, one of my concerns about the overall market is inflation, right? And in, a lot of what we're talking about here is inflationary pressure on that. And it was really interesting, the article was saying the average American, and, I, and again, I, I'm, I'm quoting Moody's here, not my data, mm -hmm. on that, they're paying $450 a month more than they were paying prior to this uptick of inflation. Um, and it's funny because I, I read that and I asked my wife on the way in this morning, I said, you know, because she holds the purse strings, I'm not allowed to do that for a very specific reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I actually have a debit card that has a dollar amount on it. I'm not allowed to smart spend lady, Yona. <laughs> to spend over. Um, very smart lady. And part of the problem with a bike shop next to my office, that number got reduced drastically. Okay, she can buy, he can buy one cup of coffee a day. That's the only <laughs> amount of money that goes on, on the card. Thank you, honey. Uh, <clears throat> but so I started asking her, you know, you know, what are we paying? You know, because she runs the, the household budget. Our electric bill went up like 200 bucks a month. Yeah. Hmm. Which is great. Because Segura Solar mm -hmm. is actually coming to put mm. 
solar mm -hmm. panels on our houses were on the queue, so mm -hmm. we don't, on my house, excuse me, I don't know when we're going to get there, but they're going to lock in, uh, I think the bill came in, Jonas said, something almost close to 500 bucks for last month for electric, which is insane. Mm. For two, and there's two people in your house. Well, we got the dog and it's the cat. It's you, Yona, and a dog. <laughs> and a cat. And it's 500 a month. Yeah. Think about that. Force with force 80 something. Let's, let's think up. about the people that have you, Yona, and some kids. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and we, you know, uh, you know, we don't do loads and loads and loads of wash, right? We'll do so there's like, two people. There's two people. We'll, yeah. We'll do a load of wash, like every couple of weeks because we just yeah. don't have a house full of people right right and all that stuff so we're putting Segura one of our wonderful sponsors uh, Segura Solar on there that's going to reduce that bill or keep it uh, at somewhere between 250 and 275 they haven't quite given us the analytics yet mm -hmm. on it but that's going to be locked in for 20 years sure on that end of it um, you know, she was talking to me about, you know, steaks or e food is more. Everything well, I got a stat for you. The yeah. food at home index, a good proxy for grocery prices has increased 13.5% over the past year. The largest such increase since March, 1979. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Raise your hand if you remember 79. That was before <laughs> my time. Right there. 1981 for me here. But the largest increase since March, 1979. Yeah, so so we, again at the end, in the beginning of uh, the end of last year and the beginning of this year, you know, Jerry was asking me what my concern was, and I think that's it, and that's starting to creep in. How we got there, why we got there, is a whole separate argument for a different day, but it's 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 impacting down. You know, one of the things I love about what we do, what every one of us do here mm -hmm. uh, for a living, is we basically touch either one of the three things. Uh, shelter, food, and clothing, right? Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we're in one of them, which is which is which is shelter, right? And and you know, food and clothing is the other two big items. But when those start going out of control and costs, which I think we are at this point now, um, you know, man, um, you know, housing is it's just you know is gonna gonna take somewhat of a let's say a softball in the face. Not a hardball, but a softball in the face to go ahead and do that. So I've been babbling a little bit. Any mm -hmm. of this, anything you want to jump in on? Well, this? I mean, yeah, people people have to have a place to live. I mean, you cannot buy that you know um, name brand shirt and maybe go with something different. But I mean, as far as where you're gonna you know sleep at night, I mean, that's a that's a a problem that everybody has, um, and there's no getting around it. And you know, maybe you don't want to get up at two o'clock in the morning to, to wash your clothes to, to save a buck. Um, you know, so it's it, the, the realities I are. I know <laughs> the realities are real, and uh, they're not. Doesn't appear like they're going away. So uh, these are real life problems, and um, it's it's good to be able to, you know, be in an industry that that can help hopefully solve one of those problems. You know, for people in the community. Joanne Mackey, love you, Joanne Mackey. She's the queen of Keswick. That's what we've dubbed her. She says, when I purchased my first house in 1978, Keith and John, it was in Fairfax, and mortgage rates were 23%. Yep. Serious inflation as well, and why rates were so high then. Where are the professionals who are around this area at that time? And this is an interesting show for sure. <clears throat> well, so I was. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. These two both were. Yeah. Well, I, I, I purchased my home in, in Elmore County uh, in 2001, and I believe my first rate, I think, was 6.75. My first home in Elmore County was 2006, and my rate was 6.18. Six and an eighth. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, six and an eighth. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was jumping in the streets and yeah. happy to get it right. at six and an eighth. Sure. It wasn't like... This stings. This is terrible. The problem is, is the American consumer and the American buyer grew to expect three and four percent rates. They did. And then when we got like trained that this is the mortgage rate, right. when we see six, we freak out. Mm -hmm. But this Correct. has happened before. Correct. Absolutely. So I, I, you know, I, I, I say. I, tell this to my wife all the time you know why can't i be right about the winning lottery ticket numbers we're right about things like this and and we talked about this for, for months and actually a year and every time there was a three percent two and a half percent we said guys this is a normal they'll get used to this that's right you know normal is maybe yeah. where we are at now right that's right you know historically maybe normal is six mm -hmm. I, I don't you know i don't mm -hmm. have the data in front of me if i remember i think since 72 the average is somewhere around seven percent seven point two i, I will say this the last time the rates have gotten to this level was 2008 
So we've had a, what is that, 14 year run correct. Mm -hmm. of rates below six. That's correct. And 14 years is a generation. That's a long period of mm -hmm. time right there so of people being trained for rates below six. It's, it's even, mm -hmm. it's a generation, but it's even between two to three turnovers of homes. Right. Right, because the average person reached it's not nine now, it previously was seven. Correct, and at yeah. one point, when the back in back in when it started in two thousand eight, it was five. Right. So we went from five to seven to eight to ten mm -hmm. uh, years staying in in their home uh, on that on that end of it. Uh, the Smiths tend to stay in there for decades. Well, actually, <laughs> well yeah, I mean you're not selling now. You're not going to sell it now. The sell. The, the, uh, I disagree. The late no. The, the okay. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to buy? Are you gonna are you gonna buy something with a rate that's considerably higher than you have now? No, but I'm blessed, right? So I paid my house down that, so much. I get it, but if you sell it, where are you gonna go and what are you gonna buy? So so there's a flip side to that, right? So I'm looking at it right now. The last seven days, which I talk about all the time, we're we're on par. Eight, Eighty nine came on the car for about, about ninety, but inventory's picking up a little bit. Look. I, we're literally, my wife and I are literally yeah, Ms. going through Ms. this Ms. right Ms. now, <laughs> as we said on Monday's show. We got a cold call offer on our house that was substantial, substantially higher than, more, than what we paid. Okay. Substantially. Mm -hmm. We would cash out with a bag of money. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to go? That's right. And what are we going to buy? Right. And when we do it, what's the rate going to be? So and how's that impact the monthly payment? Okay. We did the numbers and the math. Even we were fortunate, we'd be able to put 20% down on it. Mm -hmm. I'd be able to lock in, a, mm -hmm. drop some points, bring mm -hmm. some money at closing, mm -hmm. and be able to do some remodeling. Mm -hmm. Still, the delta between what I'm paying now mm -hmm. and what it will be. It's going up. Or your, your quality of living is going down. There you go. Literally. And, and we're not struggling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are not struggling. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So uh, you know, for, for me, it's a it's a balance. So this is a very personal thing. And in each transaction, and you see this, John, right? Every client that you talk to, you know, it's not a macro conversation, right? It's a no. very okay. What's going on in your life? What can we do to help meet check those particular particular boxes? What is the tools I have in my toolbox to help Keith at this specific time? But in my particular case, Jerry, you know. I'm at a point right now that I know I can get a substantial price for my house because we're selling one up the street from us. That yeah, happens. you said it the mm -hmm. fives. Mm -hmm. No, there's a coming soon which I can't talk about. That's going to hit the market on Monday. Okay, call it the sixes. The no, no, no it's not that quite high okay. uh, on that end of it. But my point is, is in the four to five hundred thousand dollar price range mm -hmm. that I we have a dozen people already just lined up. Realtors, yeah. Yeah, lined but where up. would you go? I don't know. I think the Caribbean looks nice. But <laughs> so you're moving out of the country. No, 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 no. So, uh, but you're 100% right. And this has been, and so you're getting in the middle, John, of a family di dispute live in front of a bunch of people. His wife <laughs> wants to stop. This yeah. has been my argument to my wife, frankly, is, okay, where are we going to go? I love my 3,600 square feet. I love my two acres. I love my stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I love my wife more, so that's where we're going. Sure. But, but and yeah. stuff like that. But you're 100% right. But the market, th 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 there's units and there's homes coming on and they're trading. And they're trading quickly at the right location, at the right price, at the okay. right fi feature, mm -hmm. in the right conditions. Mm -hmm. um, this comment's come in. Powell has said the, fe the Fed will do what it takes to bring core costs down. I saw that. Um, never something to learn to leave with. This is concerning. I mean, multiple people are reading, seeing the news right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and John, you have the, the fortune or misfortune, how you want to look at it, of coming on the show after yesterday's yeah. Just bloodbath. Bloodbath, absolutely. I mean, mine, I was down 5.16% with our portfolio yesterday. Yeah. Mentioned that to my wife, showed her the number, yeah. her jaw hit the table. Yeah. Okay. What... Talk to us about what the, the, the clients are saying, what, what, what the, uh, the folks across from the desk are saying. Um, you are a calm guy, a reasonable guy. You're a guy that has experience uh, and knows what he's doing. What do you pass it along to these clients? Just, just, just hang on. You know, just, just hang on. Stay the course. Um, you know, don't panic. Um, it, it, there's just a lot, of, a lot of unknowns out there, but the, um, the community, you know, Charlottesville, one of the reasons why I'm here is because I do love Charlottesville, and I'm just really, really fortunate 
to live in this market and and we have a kind of a, a history of consistency here that uh, a lot of communities just don't have so it's it's just you know try to uh, you know have that attitude of gratitude to you know be thankful of what we do have which is the uh, you know that that Charlottesville stability and I, I just don't see it changing so if you are lucky enough to find a house and and get an offer accepted you know that's just you know it's it's it, it's just all good, uh, but but finding those properties um, and getting people in is is it's difficult. So you've just got to you know stay the course. Um, you know let's work the plan, and um, and just stay patient. And with if you've got trusted you know partners, if you've got a good realtor, you know that are you know working the the coming soon's and are just you know staying on top of their game, it can help people get what they want that that end goal which is a, a place to live uh that's affordable that is you know in line with what they're looking for bravo well said that was beautiful scott's gonna love that can you <laughs> cut that into a highlight there you go. A sizzle reel. that's a sizzle reel with my question to his answer you just handle that beautifully beautifully keith smith jump in here you know I, you got my wheels turning on the where to go and and I, I'm going to jump in here, which is I have not prepared to talk. I was not prepared to talk about today, but it's something that's been happening in the last couple of weeks that I think is going to make the inventory even tighter. The new construction, the development groups out there are now backing away from projects. They're sprinting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we know and then, <laughs> we we have a couple of them. Yeah. So and it's and it's interesting. So I'm looking at some stats here. The 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 new construction market is dropping, and they're drop, dropping drastically. They are they're, the developers are moving from their B and C sites to their A sites, mm -hmm. and they're just they're canceling contracts. I'm, I'm, I see it happening on the ground, and all uh, and they're they're backing off on selling uh, building new units so what's going to happen here is this this little balance right as new construction drops and 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 we've not made up this 3 or 4 or 5 million depending on who you talk to units that were new construction units that were short from the time of great unpleasantness so if they're now can, they're dropping again and they're moving mm -hmm. out of pro, pro, these are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of potential projects in the next 24 months homes that are not coming to the market now. Mm. That's just going to I don't know I see how you feel about it and definitely Jerry feels about it but I think that's going to put more pressure on existing which is going to make this decision of where to go even more complicated and the need for a, a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. Scott Morris watching right now hey, Scott. he says good morning gentlemen he says contracts are getting canceled and specs are getting price reductions it's happening everywhere oh yeah scott morris just let literally put that in the feed scott we love you scott morris so it's this an interesting really an interesting stat um on that so i'm reading through some slides on a national home builders association presentation i was part of last week on that end of it the one the one I'm looking at single family detached new construction single family attached all are dropping the largest growth multifamily yeah of course and it's odd it's well it makes perfect sense it's like how you keep, Dude, does it really you share overhead multifamily yeah. multi-generational yeah. you have grandma mom and dad yeah. and the kids yeah, well, they say that's no, the these solution. Are these are multi-story apartment complexes. That's well, that right. also makes sense because you're sharing the cost of the dirt. The dirt's so yeah. expensive, you're spreading the overhead around. Yeah, that's that's what affordable housing looks like, I, I believe. Um, you know, it's just just well, carve the, up your house and, <laughs> and, that's, and share that's, the cost. And share the cost. I mean, that's what affordable housing. Go down like. that road. This is good. You're onto something here. Tell us what you mean by that. Well, I mean, you've got you know Airbnbs, all these different phenomenons that are new to the market in the last you know 10 to 15 years, and you've just you have families that are having to uh, collaborate to find a place to live affordably and 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 eat at the same time. So you do have uh, families that are uh, joining together to you know have more more market power so you'll see this will real that Judah. that's good what they're called multi-generational families mm -hmm. that's different than multi-family right multi-family or hundreds of unit apartment complexes on that and the reason why I found that pretty interesting Jerry was um, in the 35 years I've been doing this when interest rates start getting to this point mm -hmm right and inflation is and we haven't even mentioned the word stagflation because i think that's coming next on that end of it 
Um, usually multifamily market drops, takes, takes a plummet. And it's mm -hmm. interesting, multifamily is picking up. Now, a lot of that might have been because they were in the pipeline for a long time, right? You know, multifamily projects are tens upon tens of millions of dollars. They start years ago, and, and once that ball starts rolling, it doesn't stop. But, you know, they're also looking at rent increases in double digits. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. It, it's, um, I think it was, um, I think it was Jason Kirby on Monday said that we've never seen anything like this before. And I think he's right. If I start looking back, this, these sets of data and everything we have going on right now, I don't think anybody's ever seen before. Absolutely. A lot of it's just... Cattywampus, if you will, is just going in. Go right there. I, like, I like John Snow. No, Scott, you, this guy's you, legit, Scott. Do you have any experience in the construction trades? Because that's, no, no, no. that's an official term in the construction right. term. When you look at a look yeah. at a wall that's going a little yeah. bit, that's a little cattywampus. Cattywampus, man. I haven't heard that in forever. <laughs> well done. This is a good comment that's been put on uh, the feed from Spencer, and Spencer is watching in short pump. He says, one thing to highlight on this show is um, when the market conditions get like this, the folks that truly have a lot of money start scooping up property because they have the cash to do it and they don't leave it in the markets because the markets are so volatile. As Warren Buffett said, when folks are fearful, the wealthy, they get aggressive and greedy. That's a fact. It has always been that way when the markets- Great comments, Spencer. When the markets go wacky, people get into dirt. Mm -hmm. And then when the markets get better, people get out of dirt and go into yeah. the market. It, it I mean, we had this conversation. I, I, I bring this up. We've had this conversation with the RPs here. Like you have, if you have disposable income, mm -hmm. would you take that disposable income and would you overpay your mortgage at the 4 or 5% clip? Or would you take that disposable income and would you throw it into the markets? The markets have been down on the course of this year. What a 23% down the indices? Mm -hmm. Or would you say, I know for certain this disposable income, I can throw against my mortgage at a 4% and I get that return and it's guaranteed. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Oh, yeah. Opportunity uh, cost. I mean, it's... Opportunity uh, cost. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a real thing. And I mean, um, yeah, you, there's choices that are made. And, and a lot of people um, kind of piggyback on what you're saying is that, you know, they're, they're going to buy some, uh, some investment property and, and try to capitalize that way. So I do believe the market is oversold. Um, and, um, and so maybe... So which market we're talking? Housing market? We're talking stock market. Stock market. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and then, um, and so, so we'll just, you know, it, it, it is a very, um, it's, it's just a trying time. It's just a trying time. Yes. Yeah, so, so what, I, what Jerry is making a brilliant statement there because what, what, how I define it when I, the conversation I have with first time home buyers in particular, right? Folks that have been in a couple of homes a little bit more seasoned, they, they kind of know this already because uh, they've just been in the system, but they've, they've owned and went through. But first time home buyers, you know, I always say, you know, this extra payment towards your principal, right? This cash and to put in, you're paying yourself, mm -hmm. right? You're giving your, you're, you're increasing your own. Uh, equity, your own, and it's worker. guaranteed. And there is no risk. Well, you have a fixed mortgage well, rate. There is a risk because two thousand, the time of great unpleasantness. Let's not paint it as no, no, a, no. There is no risk. Yeah. You have to make these payments no matter what. Oh, yeah, yeah, got it. There is no risk. You're got paying got it, against got the interest rate. Got it. Got it. Got it. There's no risk. You still have to make and, these and, payments. And, that's an, and, that's, and, and with all due respect to our loan officer yeah. mortgage folks in here, but my second follow-up that I talk to first-time homebuyers all the time is, you know, it's really simple. You're either going to pay the bank or you're going to pay yourself. So mm -hmm. why don't you pay a little bit? Instead of buying mm -hmm. one of these $5 lattes, or right. whatever they are, uh, you pay it to yourself. Pay it to your mortgage, mm -hmm. pay it to your principal. Don't pay it to interest, but pay it to your principal, and you're paying yourself. Yeah. And, and this really works. It, it was a, a light bulb moment uh, for a couple of clients. I chair a, a land trust here that we help affordable housing folks buy it, and we had our first resales. And, um, and, and it was an amazing feeling to be at the end of it when they resaled it, and they walked out with fifty or $75,000 cash, to Jerry's point, mm -hmm. to, in their pocket to move up the housing ladder, right? To move mm -hmm. up the housing mm -hmm. continuum to, to buy a market rate, rate house. But that's 100% right. You're paying yourself. Absolutely. There's really not that many assets that, that will, will ever Here's do that. a perfect example. Jo Joanne, you are smart. Um, I sold, she said, in January, I saw the you know what coming. I sold my, most of my stocks 
and I closed on a condo in Alexandria in April. I got a 3% rate. I transferred my one investment from stocks to dirt and look at where I'm at now. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Well said, Joanne Mackey. Um, Scott watching the, the program right now. We love when Scott watches the program. He says, multifamily is also the four to six units on Rich Street that were split into apartment style living. He's a huge fan of the ADUs and he says, you know my thoughts on keeping construction momentum going and builders with capital to do it have a responsibility to the industry to do so. So he's saying the, the builders have the responsibility to develop. Yeah, so, so what you're, what you're going to see the builders start doing is they're going to start going to these outer rims, the green, in our region, the green mm -hmm. counties, the other side of the mountain, where they can produce, you know, single family detached homes and, and attached homes in this 250, 350 range, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the market, the market is, but the, the, the lag from today right. to getting it rezoned, to getting the site plan done, mm -hmm. to getting it built, my suspicion is the market is going to take a bit of a change by, by, that, by that point. But Scott's right. I mean, and, and the conversations I have with folks that are in this field, they feel the same thing, but mm -hmm. they just don't know what to do next. Does that make sense? Sure. Uh, Grayson says, for John, how, hard the, how high are the rates going to go? Mm. Possible to tell, right? I mean, well, some of it's built in. Um, so I, it, it, that's a, man, if I knew that, um, boy. Do you get that uh, all the time? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, people are concerned. It's just it's just what people know to ask. Um, you know, so. But is it different today than it was three months ago? Is there is there more acceptance of the rate changing now I, I than it so. was three months ago? So was the conversation three months ago? Oh my God, the the, the sky is falling. To maybe now it's more okay. Got it. This is the new reality. How can we work around this? Yeah. How can we work together? What's that yeah. conversation? Yeah, look like? yeah. Um, I think through the year, yeah, it has it has morphed in in a way from, you know, the housing kind of crash into uh, okay, it's not going to crash. It's just everything is just going to get more expensive. Um, so do you actually you actually get that conversation? Is the housing going to crash? It, I did, I did. Yeah. yeah, as of you know, three four months ago, it was you know it was sort of the idea of we're going to wait till the end of the year till this sort of you know dies down and then we're going to hop back in, and you know most of those people now are kind of wishing that they had to just you know move forward at that point yeah we're seeing on our side of the ledger um, uh, people that were wait, particularly on the sales side mm -hmm. the, the listing side we're starting to see an uptick, tech, uptick of a tempo of people saying I'm ready to put the house on the market I want to they've been waiting they've been waiting they've been waiting mm -hmm. they are now wanting to do that that's the reason why we've got a bunch of uh, listings coming up uh, quite a few actually listings coming up on that end of it, but they all want to be in now uh, and kind of done before Thanksgiving, right? So now that's starting mm -hmm. to creep itself into it, right? I want to sell my house, mm -hmm. and now that you know, where am I going to go for Thanksgiving? Where am I going to go for Christmas? On on that end of it, uh, more comments coming in for John. Um, John, can you give some insight into what kind of lock programs you have? and how long the window is for the rate lock? That is a tough question, right? Because yeah, the I mean, rates we, are moving, aren't they? They are moving. Um, I mean, we, you know, we can lock it up to 120 days for a small fee, and um, so you can go up to 120 days if necessary. That's actually not bad. 120 days is legit. That's, that's, that's actually I mean, really good. It's, it, it's gonna cost you a little bit, but I how mean. How much are we talking? Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have a to. Half a point, a point, it, it, something Roughly, like that. I mean, it's, it's um, um, I'd have to look at it, and it, 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 but you can do it. It's, it's, it's but, but it's, but it's not ten percent. Correct. Not. Well, and that was one of those market things that has dictated uh, an extending a lock period. You know, so that people can feel good about you know getting in, uh, in an in an uncertain market. So we we actually you know had a corporate program extending that that lock period. So you had like shop and lock, right? Is that, is that what that 120 days is? It, it's just a, it's just an extension to give people that, yeah. that ability with mar markets, you know, that just accelerating, it gives people that, that feel good that they're still viable at a price point. Did you think so a year ago share. we would be having this conversation? 
Dude, did you think not even a year ago? Did you think like <laughs> March? Right. I know, right? <laughs> right. I that, mean, that's like it. That's where April. the transition. Yes. Yeah. It's it's it was March is where it just kind of went sideways, and we've been sideways since. But uh, I mean, like I said, the good news is is that we're talking real estate here. Um, it is the most uh, viable wealth creation you know well, ever well created, no, and, yeah. uh, and it's not going to change. And and it, just look at the stock market. It's just it's so volatile, and you just never see that kind of volatility in real estate. Um, and if you're looking at creating wealth. Real estate today is still the best way to go. Amen. I 100% agree with that. Jason Howard, the king of Rio. Mm. King of Rio. Lives on Rio Road. Um, he's got something for you. You're a popular guy. You're a popular <laughs> guy here. Um, Jason Howard says, with the higher rates for the first-time home buyer and double-digit rent increases, do you see this compounding local businesses and government difficulties with finding staff? You've highlighted local police staff shortages, bus driver shortages in the past, Jerry. Restaurants are still being limited from an hour standpoint because they can't find labor. Other small businesses are not getting applications for full-time positions, and even larger grocery stores have eliminated 24-hour services. After midnight, your mm -hmm. limited grocery option is oh, something yeah. like 7-Eleven. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Please ask John about this. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I, I feel it. Uh, I mean, here's Teeter's closing at 10 o'clock. Um, so, yeah, I mean, things have changed. Um, but that's... And make sure you're... Uh, so, so the viewers can hear you. There we go. Super okay. close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So keep going. You're dropping okay. knowledge here. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's um, it, it, we're not alone. I think uh, that that problem is is, is everywhere. But um, you know, Charlottesville's. I mean, we've always had a kind of an issue with service here, um, so that has gotten um, you know worse. A, a little bit worse. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what do you I, mean I, by service? You mean hiring people at the service level? Mm -hmm. to, at, yeah, wait, yeah, wait, staff. I mean, yeah. there's always had um, um, you know issues here uh, in, in the Ville with uh, finding. The Ville, I, yeah, like I love it. it. Yeah, I love it. So. Um, <laughs> This guy shoots it straight. That's what I, I like that about you. You don't. You shoot it straight. I, I, I've been in this community a long time. If you're not a, sh a straight shooter in this community, you're you're not going to be very successful. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Kevin Yancey in Waynesboro. Kevin, I love when you chime in on the show. Um, for John Snow, will the next financing tool be the balloon mortgage, John? Mm. God, I hope not. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's a sizzle reel right there. I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, it just shows he's an honest guy. Yeah. And he understands yeah. the, cons the, yeah. anytime the precarious you get into, nature of it. Yeah. Anytime you get into some of those exotic products, you, you're kind of asking for trouble. And let's, I just hope we don't go in, in that direction. Um, Are you hearing any scuttlebutt about that? I mean, not, not, not really. Not, not in my own personal experience. Um, but, um, but, yeah, we'll... We we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, obviously, there are going to be some um, some more aggressive lenders out there um, that are going to, you know, produce some exotic products, um, and we'll just have to see what the what the market bears. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to take a I, wait and see on that. I'm not so sure. I, I, I'm good with the term exotic. I kind of think something else and go a whole different direction. But, well, yeah. but exotic well, like is the right, and, the exotic is the right word. Yeah, it's it's. It's out there, it, you know, on the fringe, uh, and again, it's why what we've been doing here for 366 shows and, and bringing in the guests like yourself in there is to be, like we were talking about yesterday, I said, we need to be transparent and honest because everybody that's on that feed that Jerry's watching. Oh, dude, they see through it. They yeah. see through it. Yeah. They, they, you know, they, they catch it. So this is what we try to do is we try to be authentic and actually we try to be fearlessly authentic uh, on it, uh, on the show. So thank you for doing that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, you know, we talk about all, if once you get to these exotic products and they get out there, and they start doing it. It's what got us into trouble in the last time, and that—that that is my only fear. Yeah. If if the regulatory nature does not change, right, and it stays and it keeps the lending requirements tight, for right. lack of a better term, yes, on that end of it, we'll do fine. I agree. If they if they start changing it, yeah. Kevin asks John, "Do you call those predatory, the balloons?" <sighs> Again, I haven't really had an experience personal experience with those products, but, um, you know, I, um, it, it's, it's hard to argue with, with, with some of the, the, you know, the predatory nature of, of lenders, but at the same time, some of these regulations have really curtailed those practices, and um, that's where we're at today, uh, and, and that's what hopefully will 
keep our market afloat through all of this um, you know, turbulence that we're about to experience is, is that people that are in these homes um, in, in 2020, you know, in the, in the 2020s, uh, are qualified buyers. So I don't think you're going to have a lot of, um, you know, unsupported paper out there that, that creates a, a bit of a vacuum um, in, a, in a fall. So uh, it's, um, but there's always going to be people out there trying to make a buck. And some people are going to be trying to help people, you know, figure out ways to get into homes. So it's, it's, it's kind of, a, you know, each, each case will have to bear itself out to see what it, what it really is going to be. Cut that into a reel. That's the third one right there. Mark that one. That was nice, John. So to answer the question, Kevin, directly, yes, they will be predatory. Yeah, if course. they come out, they will be predatory. They will, they will, will be predatory on the folks that are least need of, of least ability in the neighborhood or in in the community here it they will prey on them and and, and they could and then uh, but the, it, but the flip if it's side, allowed it'll happen right but then the flip side could be you know there you know maybe we have a well-qualified buyer that that goes into a you know a, a different type of loan that uh, that isn't present today because of what the market is doing so we'll just you know We'll just have to see. So it's a double-edged sword, right? It is. It so, very much so, is. Um, I could see it working for like a, a, a man or woman that's going through medical school that's a doctor. Mm -hmm. that's, that's looking for that's um, something like mm -hmm. a five-year balloon mm -hmm. where in five years they go from 60 k a year because they're in fellowship right. to like 400 Exactly. That right there, it's applicable. Mm -hmm. Where it's not applicable is someone that like is on the financial margin that it's just trying to get out of house right. and try to get out of this crappy rent situation because the rent's so high. And then in five years, they're like, the balloon comes and they can't afford it. And then they lose yeah. their house. Right. So, so this is a discussion we've been having for several weeks on the show, right? Okay. And, and that's why the term trusted advisor is important. We talked about it on Monday mm -hmm. uh, with Nikki Chambliss and, and uh, Jason Kirby. Um, you know, and I know we do it. I'm confident you do it, but I'm going to throw it out that out to your way. If, if you're sitting down with Keith and I'm on the margin, and I and you really think, hey guys, you know maybe you should work on building your credit a little bit more. Maybe you should work on raising a little bit of money. This is how you. This is how I can help you do that and come back at a certain period of time. Then we can go in and, and tackle it. I mean, you have those conversations, right? With Absolutely. Folks? Yeah, well, yes, regularly. <laughs> Yeah, so so the thing is, trusted advisor, everybody on our partner thing, a partner tab on the, uh, Keith Smith, uh, Real Talk with Keith Smith, these are all trusted advisors. These are people that are going to be honest and transparent with you. Back to the other side, a little. We we spent a few minutes yesterday together. Didn't really tell you too much about my life story. Um, of those who watch the show know that Yona and I lost seventeen million dollars. We lost everything we had in the time of the of great unpleasantness. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I can't come to you and borrow money because of that. It, it'll follow me as long as we go. And, you know, that bothers me mm -hmm. to a certain degree, but I'm also happy. Explain it's, why. It's because we financially are in a great spot, right? Mm -hmm. we, we do, we're blessed. We do very well. We've done 180 degrees. Everybody that's watching and everybody's part of our lives has helped us through here. Jerry has helped us. Everybody in our lives has helped us get to the point we are right now financially i can afford it mm -hmm. i can afford it mm -hmm. but i there's boxes that has to be checked because of the regulatory requirements because mm -hmm. the difficulty right. of financing right now if i right. walked in and said hey i want to buy jerry's house for eight hundred thousand dollars a million dollars whatever it is mm -hmm. and i don't mean to be facetious and, and, and i'm thankful but i can do it mm -hmm. financially i can do mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i can't get a loan yeah. because this is back yeah. so it's a double-edged sword, right? It's hurting me mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. on that end of it, but you know, you know, I'd like to see lending requirements loosen up to go. Hey, okay, you know, God forbid, stated income mm -hmm. loans. Mm -hmm. The God forbid they come back mm -hmm. uh, on it, but that would help me. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make any sense? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely, and I, and I can you know kind of relate. I, I don't know exactly the, the nature of what you're describing, but you know, I, I had a foreclosure on a rental property you know years ago. Uh, that you know went through a divorce and, and had to wait you know seven years to refinance my home. Well, I can I can assure so. you that seven years is BS. <laughs> <laughs> it's BS because it come it come, it shows back up. It's very interesting. Well, I, let the man 
finish that. Uh, you were you were showcasing a little vulnerability there. The viewers and listeners appreciate that. Finish that uh, thought. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just it was a situation where you know rates you know dipped, and I, I couldn't you know I couldn't jump back in because of a uh, and I had a divorce decree that you know said that I wasn't responsible X Y and Z, um, and it just didn't it just didn't work out. Um, but um, but yeah, I was out of the market due to no fault of my own for a period of time and wasn't able to execute on some of the the lowest rates that were available at that time. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's um, but the but the but the good news is is that there are some safeguards, and I know in particular you know they're not working out for you to you know leverage your money in a way that you would like, but those same safeguards are what's going to guide us through all this tumultuous times that are ahead. That was awesome, dude. That was awesome, dude. I, I know we're doing three, but can you give let's do the fourth <laughs> right there on a highlight clip. <laughs> I mean, the highlight clips, I don't know if you're familiar with, we, we chop the show up at the shorter clips, okay. and then we push them out throughout the week. Okay. That was like genuine. Yeah. Um, people appreciate that, um, because it's cut to the chase. Everyone goes through trials. Mm -hmm. It's not unique to one person. Mm -mm. Um, and when you're at. honest with it, it makes you even more like likable and trustworthy. Woody and Paul are watching Woody Fitchum, Fitchum and Associates. I'm gonna say it again. One of the best appraisers of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Fincham and Associates, he says, adjustable rates and balloons are for very well-educated borrow borrowers on the value and use of money, people that know what they're doing. It's not for John Q. Public. And Paul MacArthur from Avenue, he's a realtor, I says, like a lot of things, they are right for certain situations. And then Joanne on a different page says, someone that's coming to wealth or has earning potential in the near horizon that could work for someone like that. The viewers and listeners are so smart, dude. They, we, you do not get things past the viewers and listeners on this network here. And, it, and it's interesting. I, I'll tell you, almost every show I walk, walk away learning a little bit from the viewers mm -hmm. and listeners. A little bit. Thank you for sharing, man. That, yeah. that, uh, that, uh, and I apologize for stepping on you on the thing. I just got a little excited there for a minute. But you're 100% right. So, you know, they are... People ask why, right? There are these guardrails that are keeping us in between. When these guardrails start going away or start eroding or start mm -hmm. moving outwards further, that's when we're going to go off the cliff and get ourselves in, into trouble. We're painful, right? I, I was in the exact same boat that you were in, right? Mm -hmm. Tried to take advantage of the 3%. I couldn't mm -hmm. because of this event that mm -hmm. happened. It was no fault of my own, right? right. I didn't. I didn't create the time of great yeah. unpleasantness, just got caught up in it, but we couldn't refinance it. Mm -hmm. poor, I drove poor Scott Morris nuts. What about now? What about now? No, Keith. No, Keith. What about now? No, Keith. Okay. So, you know, it, it's uh, thank you for being honest. And, yeah. Neil Williamson, builders build what the market wants at the price the market will accept and at the rate the market will bear. Well said. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and that, that kind of was talking about what, what you were saying a little bit ago about how builders will, will kind of morph into, you know, like with the mixed use, you know, what they end up building. Um, I was curious, how long does it take to get those permits in line? How long, is it, how long does it trail the market? You know? He knows this very, very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Too long. <laughs> Yeah, that's a I short mean, are we answer. Talking 18, so how about 18? them mess? Yeah. It's, <laughs> dude, it's so brutal. It's yeah. so long. So I'll, I'll, I'll give a real life example. Um, this is terrifying. The subdivision I live in right now, called the Acres, um, I, it was ninety seven. I bought the last 150 acres inside of Lake Monticello that wasn't developed. I developed it into 150 lots and called it the acres. Okay. I did not have a trusted marketing and branding guy in my life at that point. So I came up with the name the acres. Very original, mm -hmm. right? Because all the <laughs> lots were an, an, acre an acre on that end of it. Uh, uh, but That's a good name, Keith. I, say, I think it worked. Uh, yeah, uh, you know. What do you always say about the the builder? The builder oh. and the developer can do anything from a come to, when it comes to a house, but then you have them name the roads, and they what do they do? They freak out. <laughs> they freak out. <laughs> Literally, they yeah. freak out. So th there's there's a I don't think I've ever told you this. So naming streets mm -hmm. like make developers and builders freak out. Hmm. So there's there's an actual thing on the web where there's three columns. You want to like name a subdivision? You pick one name from one column, one name from the middle column, one name to the third column. I think that's why we see a lot of Maple Street. Mm. Well, that's <laughs> why like subdivisions, you always see three names, right? Mm. Or, you know, a minimum of two names. It's mm -hmm. not just one name. And it, literally, there is a document. God, I got it in 1987, so it had to have been around long before that. But anyway, 
1997, 150 acres, 150 lots, central water and sewer, had to rezone it, had to go through site plan. It took me six months by the time I signed the contract to buy the land mm -hmm. and put my first bulldozer on the job site. Neil Williamson, building permits in Almaro County, John, take 90 to 120 days. That's the building permit. Just the building permit. That's just the build. That's that. That came after. Uh, so put this in perspective. We just did. A, I just help. Just to put a perspective, I just helped a, a client do a project in Fulvana County. We are now pushing third after six years. Mm. So it went from six months to six years. So let's just Same talk the building time. permit. Ninety to one hundred twenty days. In March, rates in, in in early March, late February, rates were in what mid threes. Mm -hmm. Ninety to one hundred twenty days would be four months later. That would be late July, August. Rates were five and change. Mm -hmm. So they jump two plus points in 90 to 120 days. So if you're a builder and you're trying to build a house and it takes 120 days to get a permit and rates jump two plus points and you're financing this development, so right? We, so we talk about- Think about that. Yeah. We talk about how the restaurants got hit in COVID. Think about the builders, right? So they went from a year ago, lumber tripling, mm -hmm. right? And all that stuff. Now they- finally get that under control and they take 120 days to get a building permit they just can never catch up no. on on this end of it and it just keeps on growing but neil uh you know uh, neil's gonna be here friday neil's gonna be here friday I, i've got a doctor's appointment i need to go to and uh neil is gonna sit in my seat and and be batman but we haven't decided which version of batman yet was was he i'm the adam west version was he like the dark knight one as <laughs> i think maybe i don't know we'll see We'll see what Neil wants. Dave, to uh, Dave, David Caron, John Snow was my guy at Jim Price. I had to buy a new car this year, and without him, it was absolutely miserable. <laughs> my man, Dave. That literally put yeah. that on the feed. Yeah. Uh, Michael Buchensky is in the game, First Heritage Mortgage. He says any product, non predatory, could be right for a vast amount of borrowers. I think the key is proper financial education for a client, budget analysis, future life planning to make the right decisions. There are so many factors in making a solid home buying and financing decision. Having the right financial team behind you is the difference between home ownership and affordability versus the bottom falling out on you. So that whole sentence, that whole comment, thank you, Michael. We weren't talking about rates. We weren't talking about financial pictures. We were talking about how we're going to serve the client, mm -hmm. how we're going to serve the, the, the our buyer or our seller, whatever it is. And thank you for Michael for chiming in on that. And that's, that's the thing. And that's where times like this, we need trusted advisors like John, like, like Michael, maybe Mike myself to go ahead and help you navigate through the, through the process. Uh, more comments coming in. Um, Kevin in 0708, the first tool was the adjustable rate mortgage, then the unverified income, then, um, the appraisals, the balloons, and then the mass foreclosures. Can you ask John and Keith if they see this equation materializing again? I, 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 I do not. Personally, I do not. I believe that uh, the ability to pay back um, is, has been factored in. Um, and so having said that, you know, um, for it to crash, a lot of other dominoes would have to fall. I just don't see that happening this time around. It's a totally different scenario in my view. Um, but, you know, it still doesn't, you know, compromise or, or, or change how hard it is to actually get into the market. Um, but as far as you know, anything beyond that, it's, um, I, I just don't see a Well, it's two sides, right? Mm -hmm. The two discussions. Getting into the market is, is difficult, right? It is. That's when you need to trust the advisors. But I think the question's more focused on now in it. Mm -hmm. Is this a good investment? Is this a, am I doing the right thing? Is this going to fall apart? you know, or like 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. and, and we get this question, if not every yeah. show, yeah. Um, almost every show on that end of it. Understandably. It, absolutely, yeah. because- What's well, unknown? Know, dude, well, because 2008 was brutal. Yeah. That's yeah. why. And people are, about. I mean, yeah. they got, and you know. Yeah, I know. And you know, and the, Jerry, the fact that we're having that conversation and the fact that people haven't forgot that it's is, good. is actually a great thing. No doubt. Agreed. It's actually a Learn great from thing. history. It's actually a great thing that we're actually having that conversation and we're being asked 
So do you think it's going to go back? And, and I'm of the same opinion. I, I publicly have said it. At the moment, I don't see it happening. My only fear right now is inflation and the guardrails. Mm. And if those guardrails start really you know, going away or moving mm -hmm. out, Mm -hmm. on that end of it. The other item in Woody is watching, Woody Fincham is watching or listening, um, the, the... Michael Buczynski says Nina's um, are not coming back. And if memory serves correct, Michael Buczynski, a Nina is a no income, no asset mm -hmm. loan. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's no, an acronym. Yeah. Um, I, would, I call them no doc loans, right? Yeah, yeah. he or says no or... income, no asset is that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, he says those are not coming back. Yeah. So that's a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hurts me personally because I would love one of them because I, I can do it, right? I can prove the capital. I can prove all sure. that stuff. But I will gladly take that hit mm -hmm. not to impact the whole market, right? Because mm -hmm. that doesn't help anybody do that. But that's, that's my reference to guardrails, right? Yeah. So thank you, Michael, for, for sharing that. Um, have you seen folks are – Multiple folks are asking um, the role of the, uh, the wealthy and the deep pocket of person here when it comes to this market and how they're going to maneuver and pivot and strategize. Does anyone want to go down that road? We've touched on this already. Um, I think the expectation is, is, is dumping some of that cash into dirt and into uh, bricks and sticks. But you guys are the experts. How about you want to start first with that, John? Sure. I, mean, I think they've been doing it for quite some time. Um, I think that's what this is all about, is trying to get some of that investor money out of this market. Um, but, you know, again, that's just my opinion. Um, so we'll, we'll just, t time will tell. Um, but, I, you know, I, I do think that the investment opportunities from people with wealth um, are, because uh, look at the market. I mean, they, they want to in, invest, like you said, Jerry, in dirt. You know, it, it's, 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 it's tangible. It's right there. I mean, it's just, and it's proven to be um, the most successful vehicle to, to create, you know, long-term wealth that, that's, it's ever been so I literally don't think I can add anything to that that was perfect dude uh, uh, and that's that's a rarity for me to shut up so <laughs> John Snow's on point today man uh, that, you're on point today I dude. literally can't add, add, add anything add anything this is that. fun isn't it John I love it yeah. yeah you came in here is his first first rodeo for John Snow it on is. the network his first rodeo and I think he's uh, atop the leaderboard right now well thank you Top of the well, it's, it, it, for, for me personally it's easy because I really do love Charlottesville so anything I can do to help the community well, that's what I'm also here for. a person you know you've got an awesome personality which which is is, which is great to this. Okay. Lake Monticello, just talk about a little bit of market there, Jerry. Um, there's only 15 houses on the market right now at Lake Monticello, and I, I use that because it's, a, it's got 4,500 homes, it's mm -hmm. 4,400 homes built, excuse me, um, and uh, cheapest home is 235. 13 days on market. It's funny, Jerry, when we were looking at this uh, about 30 days ago, remember when we had a lot of 30s and 40s days on the market out at Lake Monticello, the highest right now that I'm looking at is 27. The median right now is 13 days. And it's interesting, the average and the median are the exact same number, 13 days, which when that starts mm -hmm. com matching, that's pretty much mm -hmm. where, we're, where we're at on that end of it. But it goes from 235 up to 300. There's only three homes, excuse me, uh, uh, four homes under the price of Three hundred thousand dollars at Lake Monticello right now. So mm -hmm. what's that tell you? It tells me that we got an inventory problem. Uh, the inventory issue hasn't gone away. So back to the the money, the folks with capital or cash, mm -hmm. you know, they are they can be in the market, right? But the first time home buyer, and and I would argue that three hundred thousand probably isn't the first time home home buyer market, but but whatever yeah. but at this two to three hundred thousand dollar price range just to pick a number at lake monticello which is the go-to has been the go-to place for decades mm -hmm. for that type of buyer profile um there's only four houses to buy right uh zero days on market one days on market 12 days on market 16 days on market for those four units mm -hmm. and i can assure you probably by the end of the week they'll be the first ones out the first ones the first ones out um woody fincham he's an appraiser he has this question for Jon Snow. How long before, we, before 40 and 50 year notes show up? Ooh, man, good gosh. You know, as a car guy, um, I, you know, remember the, you know, 36 month loan and it went now, to 48, 60, there's 72, seven year loans. 84 months. Yeah. So you can best believe it. I, that, that I don't. Talk about predatory. 
<laughs> that I don't get. But but I will say this: the <laughs> seven year the seven year loan on the car, especially yeah. during COVID, that could be predatory. It it had a lot of um, no interest associated with it. Because it, it, early COVID, they couldn't get the cars off the lots. Now that's not the case. Yeah. The cars are flying off the lots. Yeah. So but early COVID, you were seeing five-year loans, no interest. Oh, no sure. interest yeah. at any length of time is always a good thing. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, sure. no interest for 12 months. Because you years. extend the term, you're lowering your right. monthly payment. You're, right. just, you're, you're paying your car off. You're not, paying the in, you're not paying the loan. You're not paying the bank or the lender, that kind of money. Um, on that end of it, uh, but, you know, and I just... You know, a product that depreciates right as soon as you roll out, roll it right. That's mm -hmm. still the well. It was during yeah, it, COVID. <laughs> it didn't, but we're kind of getting back to that now. Yeah, that right? was definitely a one-off. That, right. That's a, it right. is a, a car is a depreciating asset. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it's a depreciating asset versus an appreciating asset mm -hmm. with with a with a home. Yeah, correct. So so to answer the question, I, you know, I, I don't think I personally would have a problem if they went in that direction um, because it is an appreciating asset, but. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have to see, you know, where we go. But, but with these higher prices, elevated prices, uh, certainly longer term, if you could keep the rate down, I mean, that would answer a, a lot of questions. Forty to fifty year mortgage? That's crazy. I, How I mean, could someone ever pay that debt off? Well, you don't. So I mean, the, they would just sell the house. Yeah. So that's yeah. so. So the the play there is the, get, that the for, what. But the interest accrued on a forty to fifty yeah. year mortgage is is. So, well, they, so yeah, they would they would have to adjust something on the front because of all of the. I mean, yeah. so they would likely if you go to a forty to fifty year mortgage to keep the monthly payment in in a controllable or manageable period, they would then likely have to a few years from now after this stabilizes refinance. Yeah, absolutely. that's the idea. That would or be make idea. additional payments to the principal and sell the house. But additional payments on a forty to fifty year. What are you going to pay it off in thirty four then? Yeah, it's you just well, well you, back to your comment. You're just putting it in your pocket. So even mm -hmm. if I'm in the house for five years right. and I'm paying an extra thousand bucks a year, Simple. it's a thousand bucks that's going to come back right. to you. But John, uh, uh, thank you, Jerry, for making me think of this. Um, so when you sit down with somebody, I, I know the interest question comes up, interest rate question comes up. But does the hey, I want to keep. I can afford X dollars a month. How much does the amount of money per month drive the, the loan or the interest rate? Did that make any sense, that question? Yeah, I mean, everybody's you know on a budget, um, yeah. and it's always too much. Um, so typically what I will do if, if they're really serious about moving forward is, is we'll just get them some information from them and get them pre-qualified and, and let them know what kind of buying power they've got. And that is the easiest way to go about that particular scenario. So I want to give a little tease for Monday. Um, Woody Fincham is going to join us with Nikki Chambliss on Monday. Um, Love you, Woody. One of the best appraisers in the Commonwealth, Woody Fincham. So I actually uh, re-upped my Atom account because foreclosures are starting to pick up a little bit. And we're going to have talk a little bit about foreclosures on, on – I know he's, he's – No, I mean, I just, uh, uh, on that. I'm not – just a realist and a common sense guy, and I shoot it straight on this show. And that's how we've been in business for 15 years and bought most of this building here. The, the foreclosures are gonna, it's not, it's gonna be a problem. Well, that's the reason we're gonna talk about they're it. Gonna, they're gonna pick up in volume. They, they've picked up tremendous. We have the highest credit card debt in American history, over $16 trillion. Yeah. Wait till the, these mm -hmm. car situations where people are going to become underwater on these loans, on these cars. Which is going to impact their homes. It's going to not going impact to be, everything. Yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. groceries are up 13.5% year over year. I mean, we're not. Jay Powell is straight up saying when he's talking to America that Get this ready. will be painful. Get ready. I mean, he's straight up. He's warning us. Get ready. Buckle up. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, am I misreading this? No. no. Well, the man, you know, if you take him at his word. I mean, the dude has no reason to BS us, right? I mean, it's his yeah. reputation. Sure. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that because I've been reading with Ant Anthem. It's not impacting our local market that much, but places like Baltimore and some of these other folks, areas that's starting to creep into it, it's, it's, it's minimal compared to the time of great unpleasantness, the mm -hmm. volume of it on it, but it is starting to change a little bit. And to Jerry's point... Um, you know, it's it's folks that maybe got when interest rates were at three percent got into more house than they could afford. That's mm -hmm. the reason I was talking mm -hmm. about that we talk about 
how much I want to pay per month, not necessarily interest rate. I'm not worried about the it. folks that got in at 3% that got in more house than they can afford. I'm worried about the people that are getting in but at... If, but if they or, did or it... Or people that maybe had like a heat lock that, you know, are getting ready to have triple their heat lock payment. From where that's what I'm worried about. And, that, and that's, where the, that's where you could have where the rubber will meet the road. Well, we, I, I mentioned earlier about the Moody's at the $450. The problem is, is that if I, if I went ahead and used all my cash to buy a house, I don't have a little bit of reserve, and I'm spending an extra $450 a month on food, on gas, on all that other stuff, it's going it, to, the decisions are going to have to be made at this particular point. So it, it, I just want to, I, I really want Woody's take on it because he sees this stuff on a daily basis. So we'll talk a little bit about that on Monday. Not a great length, but just kind of. Kind of start. I think we're going to have to start creeping that uh, into our conversations mm -hmm. over the next several months. Um, John, we'll close the program on this. How can folks contact you? Folks, do you see what this man's about? Authenticity, straightforwardness, honesty, working with you through this tumultuous time. I mean, he's straight up showcased vulnerability. We've talking about what he went through with the divorce. I mean, these are the type of folks that you want to do business with, the people with experience that have been there and done that. How can folks um, contact you, reach you, do business with you? Uh, well, I'm on Facebook. If you know me, um, you know, DM me. Uh, if not, um, you know, we, we've, we're, we're in Culpeper and uh, corporately based out of Detroit. So we've got about a 70, uh, team, 70 employee uh, team of, of staff, seven underwriters, a lot of different people in compliance. So we are, um, you know, very, very much a trustworthy partner to go through this process with. And um, um, you can contact me at 434-825-8015 if you need to get a hold of me. Fantastic. You crushed it today, dude. Thank you, Jerry. Seriously. Thank you. Made it easy. Thank you. Thank you. Too, you. Keith. Keith Smith. Do you want to talk about the text that we both just got from Neil on Fashion Square? You, you can. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, or you want to tackle that at your noon show? I got mall management coming on the show. Got it. We'll, we'll, yeah. You, everybody watch the noon show. Today. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally texting with them while doing this yeah, show yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Watch the, Texting the, with mall management. Yeah, so everybody tune in at 12.30 for I Love Charlottesville. There's going to be a little bit of news coming out I mean, it's going to be... Yeah, I, I, I will let Mr. Miller handle that at 12.30. Breaking news. Breaking news. Interesting. I, I love this show, man. We're getting texts Breaking from news. people as we're I mean, I talking. literally... Like... Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, guys, Keith Smith, John Snow, Jerry Miller, Real Talk with Keith Smith, presented by Ross Mortgage, Keller Williams Alliance, Yes Realty Partners, Judah Wickower, the North Star of our network and infrastructure. We need to highlight him as much as humanly possible. He keeps us online and, and, and looking young and sharp. The Isle of Seville show is up in one hour and six minutes with news that will leave your mouth agape. Everybody <laughs> ask about Fashion Square Mall. Here's your opportunity to get some leave, knowledge. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, get ready and giddy up. Thank you kindly for joining us. The show is up in one hour and five minutes. One hour and four minutes and 50 seconds. Get the good ready. news is I'm driving to Roanoke. I'll be able to listen to it's it. It's going to be impressive. So long, everybody. Thank you kindly for joining us. Well, thank you. So tell me about the mall. What's going on?